Aloha, everyone. My name is Christopher Edwards, and I'm the chair of the Hawaii Craftsman Annual Statewide Exhibition 2022. And we're standing here in the beautiful Downtown Arts Center Gallery in the exhibition, and I have the extreme honor to have Nida Bangerter, who's the director of the Schaefer International Gallery and our juror, with us today to talk about some of the work in the exhibition. Mm. Thank you, Nida. Yeah, great to be here with you. And we have uh, 115 works of art to go through, so let's get started. So I wanted to start with the family, um, who are also the greeters of the exhibition. Um, this is a collaborative piece by Sharon and Doug Britt, but I love this because of the humorous aspect that they used and also the use of materials that are just found materials in their yard uh, with papaya tree and coconut um, and roots of plants and also shells and just the combination that it became also the greeting family. Welcome to the gallery. Welcome to the gallery. <laughs> On we go. Let's go look at some more humor, shall we? Shall we? <laughs> So this is a ceramic piece by Miley Sakamoto. I believe she's from Oahu? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah this has, uh, she uses uh, tilapia skin to make the, the fins and bits of seaweed for the, for the hair. Excellent. So Doug Britt is a Kauai artist and he's, um, his work intrigues me just by that sheer genius effort he puts into everything <laughs> with materials that are in his studio. Uh, so he's got dominoes and a small chair from a dollhouse, then this beautiful tin work and painted port portholes in the ship. And do you want to show, demonstrate the, um, the adaptability and the secret compartments? Yeah. Yeah, here's so. where you can stash all your money down inside of the ship, there's the bowels a, there's of the a, ship. There's a beautiful compass drawing on the inside, very quirky. Mm -hmm. and, um, Love that. And then there's also a secret drawer here in the stern with an anchor pool, which is Isn't lovely. Another place to put your stash. These are all clay made ceramic works hand-built um, wheel turned, another hand-built wheel. This is Raku, I believe. Yep. Um, so it's an interesting just overall look at all of the options that ceramists have when they're doing work. Uh, but the piece that I wanted to talk about that is going back into this humorous vein is the smoking fish. And this is by um, Esther Knoll, and you know Esther. Do you know, I want to tell a little bit, a story about Esther, this artist? Well, uh, you know, she's a longtime star of the art community in Hawaii on Oahu. And, um, but she uh, is 102 years old. <laughs> and um, so she, we made her a, um, an honorary lifetime member yeah. of Hawaii Craftsman and helped her enter this exhibition. And I'm very pleased that you chose some of her work. <laughs> Well, had to. It's just excellent. It's beautiful. And you just get a chuckle over it. Aside from that, the humor, they're very, very well made. And I also like that she used this additional s support piece that's a grill um, and some wood just to authenticate this smoked fish. And she's, of course, got cigarette butts in the fish's mouth uh, for that added extra effect. And charred wood, which and charred is a nice touch. <laughs> This artist has two works in that I selected, and I was very intrigued. Just my first take filter on this, I was going, what is this? Because it is ceramic, it's hand-built, and um, it also has this additional uh, motif around here that is done with needles, like sewing needles. Um, and these are actually cut safety pins, so it's a harder steel that he's put into here. And his process, he's a very young artist, and I, I'm very intrigued by this new effort that he's making, and this is, this is what innovative work looks like. When you see it, you know it, because you've never seen it before. Um, his name is Eric Sullivan, and he's fairly new. To, he's in an MFA program, I believe. Yeah, he just at started UH. an MFA at UH Manoa. Um, this is sort of sourced from underwater exposure. He's just gone uh, learning how to free dive. So these creatures are coming into his uh, clay forms in a great way. Uh, this is an altar table. 
And you might at first think it was koa wood, but it's monkey pod. And it's from an old monkey pod tree. So it's got that beautiful, beautiful tone uh, and grain to the wood. And then this is pheasant wood, this darker wood on the outside. Um, this is three drawers. And oh, there they are. They are my glasses. Oh my God. But these drawers, they're just perfect. The whole thing is perfect in the way he worked. This is Daniel Scheinfeld Rodriguez, you know, you know this artist. He's from Hawaii Island. Mm -hmm. um, I just love watching what he's working on. He will make endeavors into all types of materials, but this one was sugi pine, a big block of it that uh, ended up looking like some sort of prehistoric dinosaur dig uh, in, in the final form of it. But I, I also um, appreciate how he uh, reduced and subtracted this wood to come up with this final form that he got, and it's very comfortable. This is Claudia Johnson. She's an artist from Maui, very established career, and I was just so pleased to see her enter. Um, yeah, this is made of driftwood. So just starting with that process of sourcing driftwood, which we all see on beaches and it's quite common, but then to take those pieces and smooth them out and sand them and then putting them into this collective nesting, perfectly placed. Let's go look at this Scott Fitzel. Scott Fitzel. This artist is from Oahu and he, I juried three of his works in. Um, I was just so impressed with, uh, you know, the scope of who he is as an artist. Uh, but he's working primarily with metal uh, for this exhibition. So this is copper strips. And this is uh, woven. So you can imagine weaving copper strips together. There's 40 pieces of four feet long. Um, I asked him if he started with the bottom at the base. And he said, no, he started with the top and this rod around here. And all of the copper strips were just laying out. And then he started that weave. Mm -hmm. um, copper's really sharp, too. So there was <laughs> there's the potential for, <laughs> for getting a lot of cuts. So this is the second and third entry that I chose from Scott Fitzhall. Um, and I actually see these as a pair and not individually. And when I saw them, I thought, this is a pair. It's um, sunrise and sunset, but you've got the sun and the moon. And sort of his nod uh, to celestial um, awareness. And also that it's, you know, the very masculine uh, sunrise and very feminine moon, which I loved that idea. Um, these are made of stainless steel. That can't be easy to work with. No, no. <laughs> yeah, and the finish on these is so perfectly done um, with different, he's also got um, different surface treatments that you have a real high sheen and a polish on one side. And then on the inside, and this one you can really see it, you've got a 24 karat gold that he's used, um, like a gold leaf on the stainless steel. And this is a brushed steel and high polish. So looking at some glass works in the exhibition, um, this one, of course, uh, initial reaction to it um, on Hawaii Island when I saw it was, at first I thought it was clay, and then I went closer and saw this luminosity and transparency to the form that just really kicked it in for me. Um, right next door is another piece of glass. This artist's name, you would probably Valerie know. Beck. Valerie Beck, thank you. A really different approach in glass, but it's um, more narrative style and storytelling, beautifully done um, in her choices of uh, coloration with the glass that she uses. Love the story. So I want to just talk about these collectively because they're all outstanding works, um, but they're also works that demand your attention and close eye because of the detail and the scale, small scale, of them. And they're just tiny, precious works of, of different medium. There is a, there's three works with silver here, and I thought the skill, my small amount of time I've done in silver work or jewelry making, I have a great appreciation of this skill. And these are movable parts on all of these two by Hannah Shun. 
Um, and I thought, wow, that's such fine craftsmanship and almost a lost art form. Mm. You know? And uh, just extraordinary, I love the form. It's a very, very inventive form. It's a shape I've never seen before. And this is Boris Wang. Uh, with, um, he does lehulu, but beautiful feather, feather work. And this, as you look really closely, that subtle gradation of the feathers and the coloration of them, it's, it's beyond my comprehension of, of how it's done. I've seen this work done, but it takes great patience. And he has this sensitivity that's Nicholas Potash. Do you know what island he's from? Maui. He's from Maui? No. Um, and I think these are also uh, really finely done, uh, showing this tremendous skill that he has in combining elements. You've got coral and burled wood and uh, s silver as well. This piece in the back opens up, so there's a chamber inside of the wood. Um, and on the back side of it is a, a centipede crawling. Is, this is a centipede motif. <laughs> So I gave this piece the Merit Award in Ceramic Arts. Um, there's so much great ceramic works here, um, including yours, by the way. And you are a ceramist, so you do know perhaps what we're looking at here to describe. This is from Mark White. Um, I see this as pretty much uh, hand-built. Mm -hmm, um, this is hollow form here. It has um, a top that comes off, so you could put something in there if, if you want it to function. Um, but this is a bonsai box, and if you know anything about bonsai raising, it's, it's, it takes so much dedication and time and love to sustain a bonsai plant for a, a quite a long time, over hundreds of years, some of them. Uh, so I love that he's, he's uh, given that, this idea. How did he do this? Well, I actually have almost no idea. <laughs> it's a, you know, um, his craft is extraordinary, and he really, with um, with all of the pieces. He has two pieces in this exhibition, and mm -hmm. with both of them, he is really pushing the boundaries of what ceramics should do. Like yeah. the way these, these pieces are cantilevered out, that's mm -hmm. an extraordinarily hard thing to, to produce in ceramics because as it's drying, everything is shrinking at different rates. That's right. And then when it goes into the kiln, it shrinks at different rates. And then just the, just the extraordinary detail of the, the way he constructed the, the gravelly dirt in the bottom of the bonsai box mm -hmm. and the mixture of a, what I believe is a wheel, form, wheel thrown form That's that is right. altered yeah. and then the hand built forms. Yeah. Um, and he's given it such personality. This thing could almost come to life as uh, a character um, coming out of, of the clay.